just taking an easy taper run today. Feeling really good, starting to freshen up a bit. Um, but taking this week pretty easy compared to last week. A few weeks out from the race, well, a week out from the race now. Jeez, uh, that's come fast. So I'm really excited for the race at Eiger 101. Uh, heading to Switzerland in a few days. So we made it to Grindelwald. Uh, it's a bit of a crazy trip in the end, as it always is when you're flying. But it feels great to be here in Switzerland. Um, yeah, I've just been up for an awesome walk up at first. Uh, to a beautiful lake up here in the mountains. It's got some great views over out to Eiger uh, behind, which is which is in the clouds right now. Uh, I thought I'd use this opportunity just to talk to you guys a little bit about my training last week. I'm not going to do a full shower breakdown uh, this week. It was a taper week, so it was pretty easy. Overall, kind of ended up being around 99k, so not even 100 kilometers for the week. Um, just under 4,000 meters of climbing, so there was still some good runs within there, which is something that I always focus on with uh, a taper week. It's important to obviously keep the legs moving, especially if you've been training hard and your body's used to that's some higher miles and some higher workloads. So within the week itself, mostly focusing in on those recovery days, but I still had some good training day, days there. I think 10 days out, I did a nice kind of just under 26K run, but with about 1200 meters of climbing up last month standing, I made a nice progressive kind of steady climbing effort, which I felt really good. I felt really fresh and comfortable and confident in the legs, um, which I haven't felt for a few weeks. So that was a good confidence booster. And then throughout the week then, other than a few kind of steadier, shorter efforts, just get some good leg speed up uh, amongst some other runs, maybe some fast finishes in there, just to make sure everyone was feeling good and feeling fresh. It was really a pretty mild week, it's important leading into a big race and for me I'd always rather be 10% under trained than 1% over trained. I know it's such a common phrase and probably used a bit too much by myself and many other runners but it really makes a big difference especially when I'm trying to be as competitive as I can be in a race obviously you want to go into it having that kind of uh, that kind of fight going into the race that you just want to keep pushing yourself and have that extra bit of energy that you need to call upon um, to get a good result so Looking at these mountains now, it's going to be a tough race at Eiger 101 um, this coming weekend. So I'm really excited for it. 101 kilometers, just under 7,000 meters of climbing. So hopefully the legs are feeling good and strong in the day. And I'm really looking forward to the, the athletes I'm going to be competing against as well. Some really strong runners who've got a lot of experience in these big mountain races. So I'm hoping to, yeah, to try and uh, push myself hard. I'm sure I'm in great company to be able to do that. <laughs> So one question I get quite often, how does my diet differ or my nutrition intake when I'm in a taper period, when I'm spending those, you know, final two weeks maybe or 10 days leading up to a race or, you know, if it's a goal race or a smaller race, do I change my diet? Do I de eat any different foods? Um, what foods do I focus on? Do I eat more? Do I eat less? So for myself, I really focus on really hitting a few kind of major points and make sure I really just focus on each meal, you know, in those 10 days out, just really focusing then every time I'm eating, is every meal nutrient dense? Is it focused, you know, putting good vitamins, minerals? And typically, you know, that means that I'm just looking at every plate that I've got in front of me when I'm eating a meal or every bowl and making sure, you know, it's colorful, making sure that it's got a variety of fruits, vegetables within the day, um, that there's some good proteins in there, so plant proteins, of course, so beans, tempeh, tofu, perhaps, and making sure that it's varied, making sure I'm focusing in on some anti-inflammatory products as well, so naturally within foods themselves, so starting the day with some watermelon or some pineapple, so fruit for breakfast, that's always something I typically do all the time. Or maybe adding in some more powerful foods as well, turmeric. Um, you may have heard me talk about that before, but turmeric is great anti-inflammatory and obviously a great addition to put with any, you know, savory meal um, or sweet meal. Some people put it in their oats, uh, but it just needs to be a sprinkle of turmeric powder. Really simple, really easy to do in the evening meal, um, but can go a long way. Um, making sure that you're eating enough. So this is a big question when it comes to um, tapering. People feel like, you know, especially leading into a big race, you need to carb load, you need to make sure you're eating loads and loads and loads of food, stuff in your face. Sure, you know, it's definitely important to make sure you're eating enough. Um, but for myself, at least, when I'm going into those easier weeks leading into a race, I typically don't 
I don't, you know, I've never sat down and entered it into a computer too much, but I don't feel like my calories really shift too much between when I'm in a deep, intense, you know, training period to then leading up into a race. I usually try and keep them at more of a constant. Um, intuitively, I like to listen to, you know, if I'm full within a meal, do I feel like I need to eat a bit more? If I do, then sure. But I definitely think it's important to make sure you are eating enough and not under eating. Your body is in a state of recovery, absorb, you know, absorbing all that hard training that you're doing and it needs all those nutrients to, to build back up, you know, to build up that strength, to make sure that all that training that you've been putting in, you know, in the lead up to your, you know, peak performance, that your body has a chance to catch up with all that stress that it's had and it needs those nutrients to really truly heal, um, you know, any of those kind of little aches and pains, uh, any of those issues and to grow that a little bit stronger. So. You need to really make sure that you are going into the race, just focusing on being as healthy as you can be. So typically to break it down for you guys, my typical eating, you know, day in, day out, doesn't change too much when I'm training hard or when I'm racing or when I'm preparing for a race in those final weeks. Always start the day with a bowl of fruit, whether that's melon or pineapple. I always like to have a nice, you know, hydrating fruit in the morning there. Pineapple is my favorite, especially if you're in Southeast Asia, it's always fantastic. But in the summer seasons, if you make sure pineapple is nice and ripe, you can eat loads of pineapple, really enjoy it and get lots of great benefits from it. Then typically I'll have a bowl of oats, not far, not long after that. Oatmeal, it's fantastic. Uh, balance of proteins, carbohydrates, really great wholesome food, food there that you can complement with some nut butter is what I like to do, get some good healthy fats in there as well. Typically then, from um, leading into lunchtime, maybe I'll have a salad, get some great greens in there, some, you know, some raw vegetables again, so some tomatoes, maybe some grated carrot, beetroot, always fantastic to get those nutrients up again and then the evening i typically like to have a bigger meal so in the in the store um you would have seen then i just bought a load of potatoes um so i'm probably gonna have some um potato chips um wedges um fat free so i won't put any oil or anything on them with that i'll just have a load of veggies like you saw so some broccoli maybe some carrots some beetroot boost up those nutrients get some great carbohydrate reserves in for the race by making sure so that you're having a good balance of foods throughout the day and of course, if I'm leading into a race, just making sure that I'm not letting myself get too hungry at any one point, not skipping any meals, just trying to have a perfect eating routine, spaced out through the day, keeping the blood sugar stable, keeping my mood in a good place, helping the body to recover and feeling energized when it comes to race day. So I hope this helps you guys out a little bit. Let me know in the comments below if you've got some great races ahead of you. But thanks for watching guys, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, thanks for watching and happy running.